So now Brett's officially a heel. He attacks the babyface Shawn Michaels. He reconciles with Owen and Davey. They form the Hart Foundation, and then it becomes Canada versus USA feud. And they didn't spend a lot of time on it until they moved on to what the real issue was, and that was with Shawn and Brett, which was going on throughout all of this. So they had personal issues with each other that started bubbling after Shawn won the title at WrestleMania 12. And they talked about sunny days. They've talked about sunny days every time uh, whenever uh, discussing these two guys. Um, and they brought it up here, Sean's Sunny Days promo that uh, got Brett some heat at home, you know, because we already know he's honest about this. So I can say this on the, you know, on the podcast here. I'm not saying to anybody that he's not anything that he's not admitted himself. He said it in his book. He said it everywhere. He was not faithful to Julie. So he's got a lot. He's got enough problems as it is in his marriage and with his family, which is what he said here. And for Sean to make that comment about something that wasn't true when Sean was the one that was fucking her, you know, we all know that. And Sean even said here on the biography, he goes, I was running around with Sonny and then I knew her and Brett had become friends. So I insinuated that something must have been going on there. And that got Brett some issues at home. One of his daughters confronted him and all of this. And it's got to be very hard for kids. You know, I've been there. I've had divorced parents. I know what that's like. And so, you know, for them to have to have that and see that what did Sean mean by that and shit like that it got you know it got him in trouble especially when it wasn't true and so he was so pissed about it he barged into the dressing room in Hartford and grabbed a hold of Sean's uh, hair and just swung him around the locker room until he he tore out a squirrel sized hunk of it so they talked about that they didn't elaborate too much on the aftermath because I've always been curious how that all came back together after this fight here. We thought Sean was gone. He's in WCW. There's no way. I also think this fight might've had something to do with, with Vince, you know, maybe asking Brett to leave when, cause Sean came back right before that. And maybe Sean was like, it's either him or me. A lot of people have speculated on that, but after that fight, we all thought he was going to go to WCW and it was really, really kind of touch and go there with Sean. So I want to know how he was brought back into the fold because then he was the guest referee in Brett's match. It's very similar. It's kind of, even though there's not a woman involved, it's very similar to edge and Matt Hardy. I was blown away that those two guys were able to work together after what happened. You know, it's when it was happening. It's not even like it was years after the fact it was in the middle of it happening. So the fact that these guys have gotten in a, in a shoot in the locker room, you know, now they're going to be back kind of involved in a similar storyline and probably be heading for a match against each other at some point was pretty crazy that they were able to, uh, you know, kind of work together and get it all done. And I'm curious how that all came together and what Vince had to do to convince these guys to please goddamn get along before we die and WCW kills us for good. So then, of course, after that, we fast forward to after SummerSlam, Brett wins the title for the fifth time, and now it's Raw and MSG when McMahon gets stunned over on the other show. You got Goldberg debuting in WCW on that same night, and that's when Vince tells Brett he wants out of his deal, and they and, Brett, and Vince is on the biography here, and he says, you know, we just couldn't afford it, and we were like, I wonder if he can go get that other deal from WCW, and Vince legitimately did want him to go and get that money. He wanted him out of there, and that's what I talked about when we opened up here the the timing on it is just so weird when you look back on it now because hindsight is always 2020 but Vince being the businessman that he is thinking about where they were at the time they are on the ropes they are getting their asses kicked by WCW even during the Canada USA stuff which was very good even the smart internet fan or not internet fans but the smart marks and the smarks and shit like that like myself back in those days insisted that the Hart Foundation was a better faction than the NWO they had better resumes they could kick their ass in a fight I kind of still believe that. But the NWO was a much more over faction. They were the hottest thing. It wasn't Heart Foundation shirts everywhere. It was NWO shirts. So even with the strength of Brett, Austin, Canada, USA, and all that stuff, they were still losing. They were losing hard to WCW. So when you think about that, and Brett's the champion, the only other people you have to fall back on are Taker, who you just put the belt on at WrestleMania, took the belt off of. Austin just took the pile driver from Owen. You don't even know if he's going to wrestle again. Well, maybe by then you think he's probably going to be okay, but still pretty sketchy, I'm sure, with Steve Austin. He's not back in the ring yet, wouldn't return for a couple of more months. And Sean has been really fucking weird all year long. He lost his smile, then he wanted it out of his contract because it was an unsafe working environment. So it was just unstable at the time. To me, not the time to lose the most stable thing you have in your company, a good champion that's going to go out there and perform and give you what you need every single night i can understand vince wanting out of the deal i can understand vince saying okay we just can't afford this bullshit 
But I think even as desperate as times were for them at the time financially, they could have held out a little bit. They could have easily afforded to wait until December or maybe even WrestleMania and have Brett put over Steve again, which would have been awesome. A rematch from WrestleMania 13 probably would have been hard to top what they did the previous year. But now title's on the line. Now you're passing the torch. Brett takes a stunner right in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania 14. Austin beats him. And then uh, you know how it, at WrestleMania 14, they put the Austin shirt over Sean. Maybe they do that to Brett, or maybe they go get a WCW flag or shirt out of the audience and lay it over Brett's carcass, and you send him down to WCW. I would have rather Brett left that way. That would have been awesome. You know, he would put Steve over in the main event. It would have been a big deal, and then he could have gone down to WCW. Um, but instead, Vince, it felt like a rash, rushed decision that, made, like, man, why did it have to be right then? Why did you have to shed his contract immediately? And I know it was like 90 days. He gave me one of 90 days to get out of it. But I think you could have waited like another 90. You know, if you got a 20-year deal, what's paying him another six months? Does that really matter in the grand scheme of a 20-year deal? You're still getting out easy if you can get this guy off your, uh, off your payroll and stuff. But I think waiting would have been better. And we've all talked. I've talked about it several times throughout the years that had the screw job not happened, lots of things in the wrestling would be different. Lots of stuff. Namely, Owen Hart would probably still be alive. So you can even trace it back to these negotiations or this this conversation with Brett. What if Vince just waited until October or November to have this conversation with Brett, you know, or a little bit longer or some, you know, there's some sort of trajectory that would have, you know, maybe uh, been able to put a nice bow on the, the Hart Foundation storyline instead of them all just leaving the way they did, you know, and leaving Owen there all by himself for him just to flounder and do nothing and then slap the Blue Blazer gimmick on him. So, you know, maybe some of that would have helped change his trajectory and maybe he'd still be alive. And who knows? I think Austin could have still gotten on the map, but I think Brett and Sean still would have been obstacles for each other. They still would have been a headache for Vince. And Vince, I guess at the time, the, probably the main reason is here, he had to choose between Brett and Sean. And maybe his thinking is, hey, WCW is kicking their ass. I got to think long term. Brett's 40. Sean's younger. I can ride more years with Sean. Brett's slowing down. Maybe that's Vince thought, Vince's thought, I guess. Um, but still, even if all of that is true, and I'm not saying it is, I just think Vince should have maybe slept on it. It felt like it was a decision he's just like made right away or like, oh, I just got to have, I got to talk to him right now or whatever. I just think they could have waited and things would have been an awfully lot better. But anyway. They talk about that, how, uh, you know, Vince wants him out. And that was it. You know, I think Brett even knew we've seen this. He's, he's talked about this multiple times. We've seen it in Wrestling with Shadows. I think the moment that he faxed that notice to WWE, that was the end of his career. And he knew it. He knew it. He knew they weren't going to do shit with him down there. And they didn't. He had no highlights. He talks about the steel plate with Goldberg. That's it. Everything else was a complete fucking mess down there. So that was essentially the end of Bret Hart it was really, you know, September of 97. Because, I mean, after that conversation, think about what Bret did on TV. Not much. The very next In Your House, or Bad Blood, he wrestled on the undercard in a tag team match on the same day Brian Pillman died. Sean and Taker were the spotlight there. Should have been able to see it coming. Dirt Sheet started reporting that Bret was leaving for WCW, so he was almost like kind of cast aside. But it's still pretty amazing that Vince decides to have this conversation with a guy with creative control in his contract who's wearing your championship fucking belt. People who take Vince aside in the screw job, well, you didn't want Brett to go over to WCW with the belt, did you? No. <laughs> Vince could have easily avoided that by having him drop the belt before this conversation took place. Why didn't he do that? Like, just not even, like I say, said, maybe wait a few months. Not even a few months. Wait a month. Have Brett drop the belt at ground zero or hell in the cell or what the fuck ever. Brett even said... As we're going to get into the screw job here in a minute, that Brett would have dropped the belt to Steve Austin or Steve Lombardi. He didn't care, which I don't think is entirely true. I don't think Brett would have dropped the belt to Steve Lombardi. If you really gave Brett a choice to drop the belt to Steve Lombardi or Sean, you got to really hate Sean uh, to pick Steve Lombardi in that scenario. But that's what Brett claims. So when you look back at the timing, it was just odd, and it would lead into you know what is uh, you know aside from Owen Hart was one of the most gutting things for me. You know, and I think of like the the worst things, you know, ever. It's like Owen, you know, when it comes to deaths, of course, it's like Owen and Benoit. That's just super gnarly. But when it comes just to things that really bummed me out and made me feel like my pet died, 
was the screw job, <laughs> number one, the screw job, Randy Savage leaving in 1994, and uh, the Undertaker streak ending, I think are like kind of the three big ones that I'm like, oh, I wish we could have those back. You know, like, I just wish we could have those back. And, uh, you know, this is this is one of them. This all sucks. And it was all stemming from Brett and Sean's heat. Vince, the ever, ever the genius he is around this time with his horrible timing, decides that after he's told Brett this, he's going to ask Brett to drop the belt to the one guy he has fucking problems with in the locker room. And he's going to insist that it has to be him. Boy, Vince, I'm not sure. Looking back, how smart of a businessman you really are. This seems like a lot of these. This seems like stupid <laughs> to me. He seems like really stupid decisions to make right here.